Come to the holiday. No, I haven't How been away. Do Good evening, Mr. Nicholas. How do you do? Dance, Miss Bronte? I'm sorry, Mr. Newell, but my program is full. We have the pleasure of the next waltz, Miss Anne? Why, yes, Mr. Nickel. Are you going to dance with me tonight, Miss Emily? As often as you like, Mr. Nickel. Everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. Those unhealthy girls from the vicarage haven't set out a singing dance. I only ask them to alleviate the bareness of the walls. Why do you call them unhealthy? They write poetry. They go for long walks. And the eldest one collects brown packing paper as a hobby. That one looks as though she might collect a husband before the evening's out. So you see, I've turned over an entirely new leaf. Oh, I know, Mr. Steve. My aunt says you're no longer to be avoided. Quite the contrary, in fact. Really, Miss Anne, you do say the oddest things. Don't be angry with Charlotte, Mr. Nichols. She has a sharp tongue, but she doesn't mean what she says. You'll find that out when you get to know her better. The whole incident is already forgotten. Have you killed many foxes lately, Sir John? <laughs> to be home again, Miss Bronte? I'm not sure. Mr. Nichols, I find after all that I am disengaged from the next dance. You have my sympathy, Miss Bronte. Next dance with me, Mr. Nichols. With pleasure, Miss Bronte. So do not imagine that my singular request was prompted by any desire to dance with you. In that case, we better find somewhere where we can talk. Mr. Nichols, I have noticed, and I think many people here must have noticed, that you pay very particular attention to my sister Emily. In your absence, Miss Bronte, your sister Emily and I have become good friends. I value that friendship, and I have every intention of preserving it. And I have every intention of protecting my sister from any humiliation to which her generous nature might lead her. It's useless to prolong this conversation. Shall we return? What I have to say will not take long. I have a plan for Emily. A dream very dear to both our hearts. Any obstacle which stands in the way of its fulfillment, I intend to remove without scruple. Do I make myself clear? May I ask the nature of your plan? When I have saved sufficient money for my present duties, I'm going to take Emily to Brussels. There are a number of pensions there that offer an excellent education in exchange for the teaching of English. An admirable plan, Miss Bronte. Most practical. It surprises me, however, that anything of so prosaic a nature should haunt your dreams. Is it prosaic to want to escape from this... this rut in which we've spent all our lives? 
Is it ignoble to yearn for a bigger world, a world rich in material for the books we shall one day write? Miss Emily has always given me the impression of being very happy in her rut, as you call it. And you? And I? You, I fear, will take your rut with you. Playing the music for the next dance, shall we go in? With pleasure. And I hope it is clearly understood, Mr. Nichols, that you will dance no more with Emily this evening. On the contrary. I'm going to ask her for the next dance. Very well. You came to the vicarage at my request. And tomorrow you shall leave at it. There are two ways of dealing with the young ladies of your perverse temperament, Miss Bronte. It is fortunate for you that I am not a woman beater. Charlotte, Charlotte, what is it? Charlotte, please come. 